Hello, I'm Sarah Waxman, Advertising and Marketing Manager here at Friends Journal, and today we are having an artist chat with JJ Tizu, who is an activist and photo uh, photographer here in Philadelphia. He recently worked with us on um, a photo booth at the Friends General Conference gathering, and um, his mission is, um, or his, he's known for his campaign, Everyone is Photogenic. And so at the gathering, we took over 5,000 images of happy photogenic friends. And, um, and some of those images can be found in our September issue on page 10. Check that out. Thank you for being with us today, JJ. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, um, both here and at the photo booth. Of course. We loved working on it. It was um, a new experience for us. And um, I know you've done photo booths in the past, and you also have experience with, um, with Quakers. And so I wondered if you might tell us a little bit more about your mission as a photographer and activist and how that holds similarities to um, Quaker values. Absolutely. Um, well, so I talk a lot about the idea that everyone is photogenic, um, which is, it's interesting to look at how we misuse that word um, and how what the implications are for our own sort of self-worth or appreciation of our neighbors when we start to say that I'm not photogenic or someone else isn't. Um, and that sort of permeates through into the rest of my work, not just if I'm sort of setting up a portrait booth, but in how I choose my subject matter. Um, I try to create images that sort of celebrate and empower, empower and affirm folks who are working towards um, building a better world or sort of acknowledging that light that is in all of us. Um, I think that's where the main commonality comes in. You know, photography is inherently rooted in light, um, but it's not just so much about the light that comes you know, from the, the studio equipment or from the sunlight, but more the internal light uh, that, that shines out in a portrait. Um, I know that in Quakerism we talk a lot about sort of recognizing that light in each other, and that's sort of what I try to do when I'm making portraits. Is there, are there any instances during, um, well, we worked for, I think it was two different days, um, and I'm just wondering if there were any examples of kind of that light shining through that you might have seen, or um, something that really stood out to you about um, the Quaker community that was at the FGC gathering? The whole thing was amazing. I can't, I can't pick out a single one. Um, every single person who set foot in that, that space and who sort of came forward to be seen and to sort of share their own, uh, their own presence. Um, it really was a gift. Um, and so there were people who came in, some who were a little bit more shy, some who were more ready to ham it up, um, some who had ideas about how they wanted to present themselves and some who weren't used to uh, being photographed at all. You know, it's interesting in our new cell phone generation, there's a lot of people taking selfies and who are used to a lot of the sort of the way that photography has become a lot more pervasive in our culture, but there were other people there who told me that they had not sat for a portrait or been photographed in 25 odd years. That was pretty amazing. Um, but there were so many different moments that I can just, uh, I, I can't single out a particular one and I definitely, I think you guys are going to post a link to the animated recap that's sort of like a flip book of the whole thing or maybe can link people also to the gallery of all of the images because there's something marvelous to going through all of them and seeing the different, the different expressions, the different people, the different ways that they all sort of responded in that same light. That's some of the feedback we've gotten is that that's very popular is this flip book which there'll be a link at the end of this um, artist chat to that, um, that gallery and flip book mm -hmm. but um, I think also it, I, was, I was there kind of helping out and in terms of seeing um, the, there were so many different types of structures, like groupings that people put themselves in in order to get um, their photos taken. Some were singular, mm -hmm. but then we had, there were generational, there were multiple mm -hmm. generations in one photo. There were groups of young friends, young adult friends, Mm -hmm. um, teenagers, of course, and and so I'm wondering if that if that's something you see um, normally when you're setting up a photo a photo booth for an event. Mm -hmm. I know you've done them for um, different fundraisers in the past and other different corporate events, but um, I wonder if if that's the, something that's normal. The intergenerational aspect of it was actually really striking to me. Um, I often tend to operate in my own age range, plus or minus a decade, maybe. And I really love working with youth and elders, and um, there was a real range there, and there were so many beautiful connections there, I think, between 
uh, teens and elders, and just even in just some of the love that came out in some of the families, both, you can tell that there were both biological sort of families and also uh, chosen families, and there was a sort of love resonating through all of it. Um, and I think that definitely some of that intergenerational aspect was maybe more unique uh, to this than some of my other experiences. You know, in some ways, they're photographing this group was the same as any other humans because we're all just beautiful humans. Um, but there, there was definitely something to that aspect uh, that struck me this time around. Hmm? Me too, definitely me too. Um, I guess I'm wondering um, if you can talk a little bit about, um, I know on your webpage um, you have, you kind of outline about how your work is peace driven and I'm wondering if you can just tell us a little bit about what that means and maybe a project or two that you've done outside mm -hmm. of um, the FGC mm -hmm. photo booth that Absolutely. reflects that. Certainly. Um, when I was thinking about peace actually I wanted to share a quote with you uh, by my friend Jeb Lewis uh, from his artist statement that I think maybe maybe resonates to what it's all about for me. He says, uh, artistic practice matters when it connects us when it makes us hesitant to kill each other. And for me, in, in some, some sense, that's what it's about. It's, uh, it's about seeing ourselves, seeing our neighbors, seeing that there is no such thing as an other. You know, we, we have all these artificial distinctions of othering uh, people. And I've, I've, through my work, uh, both through my sort of paid commercial work and also through my personal projects, I've found myself in a lot of different situations photographing uh, doctors in the operating room and lawyers in their offices and protesters in the streets and then not just the dancers on stage but the stage managers backstage who are making the performance happen. Um, the people who are you know running the company to the farm workers who are picking the food and they all like that light is when they like are comfortable and relax and smile um, it's completely universal. So. Now, there's definitely some interesting places where my personal values and sort of the, the mainstream media market of what I'm supposed to as a photographer who makes his living by making images, you know, there's definitely some, some disagreement there. And so uh, I always try to balance the sort of making a living versus also just generating images that I think have value to my community and to the world of it, that sort of promote the kind of take uh, on, on life that I would, you know, like to see. Um, some of the work that I've done has been supporting activists, um, particularly in the community media, in food justice, um, a little bit in climate and, uh, um, and war and sort of imprisonment kind of issues. A lot of the same things that you will find in common um, that Quaker activists are working on. Um, and the other sort of side of the world that I work on a lot is in arts and um, dance, theater, music, and I see those artists and activists as two sides of the same coin. It's about people who are actively engaged in building the world they want to see, as opposed to passively consuming what might be uh, spoon-fed to us by larger market forces and corporations and so on. What are you, um, what's your next project? What's coming up for you? I've got a couple things. Um, right now I'm in the middle of the Fringe Festival doing a bunch of photography for small uh, arts organizations that I really love. And uh, I'm also doing a TEDx talk at the Free Library on the 17th. So I'm super excited about that, sharing this message to a different venue, a different audience. Um, my big project. Are, oh, I'm sorry. Those are both yeah. um, Philadelphia based. So that's the Philadelphia Live Arts and, and Fringe and then the Philadelphia Public Library. True. Yes. Um, and then this fall I'm bringing back one of my favorite Philly projects which is a, a personal one called How Philly Moves and it's a set of community dance portrait sessions where basically anyone who is con considers themselves someone who loves to dance is invited to participate and we hold these music mar marvelous events where people from all over the city kind of come into the same space to be photographed in the same light where dance is sort of a theme but dance in its broadest sense so some people are performers who might dance on stages some people are social dancers who might only dance at a salsa or tango night or at a wedding or in a nightclub and other folks would only dance in their kitchen maybe. Actually, that's one of my favorite sort of results from a past event was one of the participants who normally would only dance alone in her kitchen. You know, one of the challenges was creating a safe space in sort of a theatrical stage setting for her to be comfortable bringing that up. And uh, she then afterwards said that it was one of the most liberating four minutes of her life. And, and what's really am amazing is seeing all these ages and bodies and people in and out of wheelchairs and four years old and 75 years old and um, 
all types. Uh, can't even describe you. The website is howphillymoves.org, and you can see some of the images from the series there. Um, but I'm really excited about bringing that back. So that'll be in December. Excellent. That's one of my favorite projects, too. Um, and I, well, thank you for um, talking with me today. And um, for the viewers, again, at home, um, there's a photo spread in the Friends Journal, the September issue of the Friends Journal. Um, as well as there'll be a link at the end of this video to um, an image flipbook, which is a lot of fun. And again, um, JJ's work can be found online at everyoneisphotogenic.com and then also howphillymoves.org if you're interested in learning more specifically about that project. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, JJ. My pleasure.